Thank you very much for having me here. Uh, it's the first time in this event, and I certainly hope that it won't be the, the last. For me, it's really important that all of you know that I am not an expert in this matter, and I don't feel an expert in it. Um, I am from food industry, and I have been working on compostable packagings for about five years. So what I'm going to give is the insight and all the information that our suppliers are, are giving to us. Costa Rica might be a very, very small country, but there is one thing that we should be certain, and it's that there is nothing but possibility for sustainable innovation on a global scale. I believe that we have the chance to be leaders in the fight against single-use plastic, and as I told you, I'm here to transmit the insight that what we have been having, what we have been having, and I think that it's really valuable information that all food industry and also scientific community can take into account. As I told you, I work on a company that is from fruits and vegetables. Uh, I, I am one of the owners of the company. I have been working for the last five years on trying to convert the technologies that currently we use pa packaging our vegetables that are mainly low density polyethylene and polypropylene and transform this into compostable packaging. Um, from this experience, I had some good insight, and last year I started a company that is dedicated, it's dedicated to design compostable packagings here in Costa Rica, manufacturing them in the United States, China, or Israel, and importing them back to Costa Rica and to Central America. Um, our vision in this moment of life on both companies is this, a modern supermarket with zero plastic in it, maintaining the convenience and added value that plastic wrapped products have. It might be a very big vision, but, I am, but I, am, I am completely sure that we are a lot closer than we might think from this objective. Last week, the main economic newspaper in Costa Rica wrote the following. Using sustainable packaging is the main priority in the near future. Research on ecological alternatives for plastic wrapping, wrappings is rising. Also, alternative packaging for stores that facilitate a balance between costs and convenience for clients. I mentioned this quote because it embodies our country's ambition goals, while also addressing some of the hard questions surrounding compostable films. Are they cost effective? Are they capable of substituting regular plastic? Could they have the necessary qualities that food industry needs? Where should we dispose these packagings after they are being used? In a, in a developing country, these questions and doubts have a, have a lot of weight, and I usually am finding lots of worries regarding these matters. I seriously believe that these answers are really, really positive, and I want to be really clear that we are pretty close from seeing severe changes in supermarkets. Um, migrating regu regular low-density polyethylene and polypropylene to composting is pretty hard because there are a lot, a lot of, cha of, challenge, of challenges implicit in this. Uh, in this time, in this last four or five years, my team and I were able to develop the necessary technology and logistics to implement a model of circular, of circular economy where BM being, sorry, where we, where BM being capable of selling large-scale processed salads in compostable packaging, recovering them back, taking to the compostable facility that, that we designed two years ago making compost in this, or in this facility where we are generating organic material that we are taking back into farmers. Um, this compostable facility actually was very cheap. Usually when plastic industry sells us the difficult and, and all the challenges on treating compostable materials, I think that it's not that hard. We constructed a facility that is capable of processing 100,000 bags per month with $10,000. So it's, I think it's more, as, it's more the, if you want it than what the plastic industry is saying. We had major stepbacks like losing one of our main clients to problems on the resistance of the compostable packages or destroying a big part of a shipment due to back to inappropriate temperature where the, where the compostable materials were being stored. 
these were challenges that are really complicated, but these failures had a very high, had also had a very economic cost, but they were part of a learning curve that is leading us toward applications that are becoming disruptive innovations and that other companies and competitors are starting to replicate. Apart from using compostable materials, we are forming a network of alliances in the food industry that it's, it's making us capable of recovering materials after the consumers has been using them and taking back to our facilities. This, I think that this is one of the first models similar to a to, um, to a circular economic model that is being implemented in Costa Rica. I don't know, I'm not sure in Latin America, but I have been looking for information and it's not that common. So actually we are very proud of it. This figure shows the, the global biograde production capacity in 2015 and also the fossil plastic production in 2016. Looked at the bio-based and the biodegradable, they're only, oops, sorry, here it is. They're only 1%. This was in 2015, but recently the, the numbers are very, very similar. And I think that it's that the amount of bio-based and compostable materials is getting into 1.2 or maybe 1.5%. But it is really meaningless compared to the, pl to the traditional plastic industry. The main materials that I have been testing include PLA, cellulose, PBAT, PBS, and sugarcane bagasse. I named these five because they have been the ones in, in which we have been finding more suppliers and also reasonable pliers and more important raw materials inventory. Some of them are in the following image. I really like this image. I think it's the, the image that has more importance of the presentation. It gives us an interesting insight of, of the types of materials that are right now in the market. From the middle to the top, we can see the materials that are based on renewable raw materials. From the middle to the bottom, we saw the materials that are based on petrochemical raw materials. Now, from the middle to the right, we see the materials that are biodegradable. And from the middle to the left, we see the ones that are not biodegradable. The ones in which we have been working the most are the ones that are in the dark, in the dark green. Sorry. The ones that we have been working the most are mainly PLA and PBAT. Um, the PLA has great transparency and it looks a lot like low density, like polypropylene, I'm sorry. The properties of permeability are very similar to low density polyethylene. I work a lot in processed salads and that's why we, the PLA is interesting for us because when you process salads, there is usually modify atmospheres that are being applied and this type of products they need some they have oxygen needs that must that must be calculated with in the in in the film so pla is work, worked really good last year for us because it was capable of letting in some oxygen and also letting out some carbon dioxide and it and actually we have shelf lives of about 10, 11 days, and when we migrated to PLA, we were able to increase one or two days, depending on the vegetable in the shelf life. And the fact that PLA is sourced from a starch usually has a good impact on the consumer. It's something really good to claim, consumers like it a lot, but we should be really, really clear that being sourced of a starch is not necessarily better for the environment than a material that is based on petrochemical raw materials. To be able to decide which one is better, a very complex analysis should be made, where all the life of the material is really closely analyzed. Uh, for the rest of the presentation, I will focus only on compostable against non-compostable materials. Something really important is that I really don't like that much the word biodegradable. Um, it is changing a lot in the world. Biodegradable, I think that it doesn't say a lot of the, of the product. Right, Jose? The biodegradable, it doesn't means, uh, it doesn't says in how much time it is going to degrade. I preferred the word compostable because compostable, at least in Europe, it is giving us a lot more information on how to process the material after it, after it was used. In my like of work, in my line of work, I deal a lot with packed lettuce and salads, as I told you before. The fact 
that PLA has given us these shelf life benefits in the supermarket. It is really good and, it, and actually it is an interesting, and it's money. This shelf life, one day of life, one day more of shelf life is a lot of money. Unfortunately, the bad part is that PLA is very brittle and it's very expensive. The brittle issue, it's mainly intrins it's intrinsic to the material, but the economic cost, it is, it's happening because there is a really huge demand of, th of this film around the world. Um, right now, what we are doing is that we are substituting PLA with cellulose, and it looks very promising, at least in our line of works. There are several converters in Canada, United States, Europe that are willing to microperforate the cellulose or the PLA in case that different atmospheres are needed. And there are other manufacturers that are supposed to add different kind of coatings that are, that are even capable of giving the material a high barrier possibility. We haven't tried this last application, but I hope that we, were, that we will start in the next three months testing high barrier films. The use of PLA should be carefully analyzed in the long term because of increasing popularity that is getting the costs and the prices really high. In Costa Rica, it, it is, Costa Rica has a really big potential in this. It has a really nice opportunities. Here we have an interesting supply of cheap carbohydrates like sugarcane. The country is trying to sell internationally its green image and there is plastic industry urged for new possible businesses. Cellulose has a problem that it is made out of trees. Well, or at least our supplier, they, they make it from trees. PLA has the problem that it is made out of a starch. In this image, the first two, the first two images, they are 100% PLA. The third one is a cardboard box with a PLA window. It has a coating for avoiding water. This, the fourth and the fifth are PLA plus PBAT and also starch, and the sixth one, it is cellulose. The fact that they are, that the PLA is from, for, it's made from starch, and the fact that the cellulose is made from trees is a big issue right now because we are in a moment when we don't have any of them to spare. If a country or a, if a country or a big organization want to really start a serious project of manufacturing each of them, there are plenty of environmental nutrition issues that should be very carefully analyzed because in this moment we have some information, but in five years we can have any other information that could be different and could take us apart from PLA and into any other material. So we, have be, we must be really, really careful on analyzing these materials when we are going to introduce them in a project of ours. Regarding the costs of PLA, we have been finding increments that can range from a 50% to a 200%, depending on volume, country, taxes. Theoretically, it should be able to compete with low-density polyethylene, but right now that's not, that's not happening. Our suppliers are telling us that maybe in five or in 10 years, we could be able to have some serious competition on regular plastics. Right now, we are buying cellulose already formed bags for processed salads and the cost is as high as PLA. But I hope that in the next six months, we will be able to form the bags here in Costa Rica. I think there will be like the third compostable bags being, being made here in the country uh, from, from pre-made cellulose coils brought from Israel and I think and I hope that we will be able to decrease our costs at least a 50%. The PBAT is pretty interesting, it's increasing, this one is the PBAT mixed with PLA, is, it's, going, it's, going to, it's increasing a lot and it's coming very popular because it's able to reduce the cost because the material is a lot cheaper. The only problem that it has is that it's not transparent, so we are using it may only, we're using it mainly to clients that don't mind that much for the transparency, as for example, retail, for example, food chain, fo fast food chains that use them in the, uh, as raw materials. And at the same time, they, with this material, they can do a lot of publicity that they are starting to buy materials in, comp in compostable films. Um, also, we use them in t-shirt type of bags and in trash bags. Already in hardware, in hardware stores and also in retail stores, you can, in Costa Rica, you can already find that this type of bags that already sell right next to the usually trash plastic bags. 
There are generally suppliers of, there's another material that is really interesting. It's called PHA. In Latin America, there is already suppliers of this material and it has a great attribute apart from being compostable because the material is also soluble in water. The problem that we are, that we are looking with PHA is that its cost is really, really high. So therefore, we discard using it in the next future. And instead, we think that it's better to work in the source of the problem and avoid the plastics getting into the rivers and into the oceans instead of working on the problem at the end of the chain where the, where the product is already at the sea. This figure is also very interesting. Okay, so the bars that are darker are the ones in 2016 and the ones that are shaded are the ones that Production, the announced production in 2020 of all these materials. So the ones that are green are, okay, so be sure that the ones that are uh, a darker color in all cases are 2016 and the other 2020. In the case of the, in the, case of the green ones, they are biodegradable polymers that are also compostable. The blue ones are materials that are non-compostable, but they have some kind of compostable material in it. And the last ones, the red ones, are fossil biodegradable polymers. They are compostable, but they are fossi fossilly sourced. This is really interesting because look at that. In almost all cases, the productions are aumenting very very interestingly. For example, look at PLA. The PLA is more than three times what it was being producted in 2016. Something that it's, we have to be really careful with it. This one is just one pet bottle that is being introduced, some kind of, it's already patented, but it's, going, it's introduced in the pet. They are introducing some kind of compostable material. These materials, they are, it, its production is increasing a lot. But there is a huge problem in here because we are not sure on how these materials, especially the blue ones, are going to behave in five, 10 years or 100 years. I was talking with Jose after in the morning and I was asking him, do you know what's happening with these materials that are being mixed, compostable materials with non-compostable? And he was telling me that probably when it loses the compostable part, it will lose it is its structure and probably it will end in microplastics. We are already buying these products and we are not being sure what is going to happen with, it, with these products. So a lot, of, a lot of education must be implemented in here. This is very, very dangerous, actually. The, the red one has, sorry, look even in this case that the chart is not enough for the increase in this material. This, the red ones are petrochemic, petrochemically sourced. They are not that popular, but as I told you at the beginning, we don't have the enough evidence right now to say that they are worse than the other ones. From, from the materials that we have been testing, there is no perfect substitute for regular plastic, and always there will be some characteristic that can be completely covered or satisfied. Therefore, we think that instead of looking for the perfect material, at least in these years and in the next three years, it is better to adapt our product to the current packaging technology instead of adapting the package to our products. To make this happen, it is critical to explain to the consumer, the project, what we are doing, and, could, and the, so we can give them clear instructions of how to dispose, how to compost, these products. The response, from, the response from the consumer is going, is actually is being really, really good. All these projects that we are implemented are giving us free publicity that, it, that has been really popular, that has made our company really popular in recent years. This happens only if we are very efficient and effective in communicating the project. As I told you in the beginning, I think that we are looking for really interesting opportunities and really see very changes on retail. In the last six months, I have been meeting with companies that are leaders in Central America on dairy, on dairy products, on produce, on meat, on juices, on coffee, on retail, on hardware stores. And the great news is that all of them are looking for better material for their products and looking for more sustainable packaging as they are evaluating and also they are evaluating compostable materials. 
The fact that key industries are starting to go in this line of thinking means that soon we will have more options. If we manage to educate the consumer in this subject, this movement could transform the market and preferences. This is definitely being catalyzed very quickly in social media. What is coming for us? The future of compostable packaging is very bright. Last year, we started studying high barrier applications for animal food, for snacks, for bakery goods, and for coffee. Our findings suggest that a material kind called polybutylene succinate has a lot to give in this area. Jose was telling me that it's very expensive. Also, um, a supplier last week told me that aluminum oxide and silicon oxide, they are being co-extruded into PLA and they are and recent decent barrier to high to light and oxygen are being implemented are being successfully implemented uh, we are pretty confident that this year we will be able to have the first I think it is the first coffee bag produced in Costa Rica that is completely fully compostable and also bags for snacks also there are several companies that are co that are co-extruding compostable materials, mainly in Europe, Israel, and China, in order to get higher barriers. There are lots, lots of opportunities arriving right now. Costa Rica is a country where almost every fruit, every vegetable, or every, veg or every renewable material can be grown. We are trying to sell our green image around the world. We have more than capable universities and institutions that are already providing amazing technological services and research. Also, we have a plastic industry that employs thousands of great people and professionals that have a lot of potential in this. I think that connecting dots in this case is really, really easy and that the potential of the country is very big and can also make us our leaders in, in this matter in the region. Life cycle assessments will definitely be a daily life and these experts in this matter will definitely be highly demanded. Also, there is a big window for research on new films, industrial waste as raw materials, and a possible impact for artificial intelligence and genetic modification in the packaging industries. These, these opportunities mean a lot for a country like Costa Rica. And today is the time to start investing on how can we take advantage in order to diversificate our economy. There are a lot of negative aspects and challenges. There is endless opportunity for sustainable innovation, but opportunity needs to be paired with hard work, education, and investment if we are going to make any real progress. Usually, compostable materials are not as durable or convenient as regular plastic, and usually there is at least one quality that must be sacrificed or complemented some other way. Extended shelf life is really hard to achieve, as they degrade easily due to heat, organic material, and oxygen. Consumer trends and our growing population are driving companies to improve the logis their logistics, decrease their carbon footprint, and also offer more freshness. Today, there are a lot of Costa Rican companies, not a lot, I'm sorry, there are like two or three Costa Rican companies that are selling bio-based products as if they were compostable. Even the big clients like supermarkets then don't know this, so they are also selling these bags to the final consumer. The fight against climate change, we think that it's really, really urgent. While we might be a small company in a small country, our goal is to provide a real model and case to transform the global industry and the food industry to make a positive impact. To do that, we need smart legislation to, deep, to adapt earth-saving technologies. It is imminent that governments get more involved to drive change. Here are a few of the policies that we have been suggesting Costa Rican government in order to drive change. Obligatory implementation of environmental education on all the education system. Decrease on important taxes for compostable materials. Creation of incremental tax benefits to companies that implement circular economies recovering environmental waste. Incentive migrating plastics to 100%, reusable, compostable, or, re or recycle. It is very important that this has to be based on the country capacity to process these technologies. Increase taxes on some virgin resins and decrease on 100% recyclable. Obligatory separation of post-use materials in recyclable, reusable, and compostable. Changes in labeling to give consumers clear information. Encourage private and public composting facilities. Transform plastic industry into innovative growing trends. Personally, I think that from now on, every new tax being implemented in a country like ours should tax practices, technologies, or activities that have a negative impact on, on the environment. And maybe it could be avoided by other projects, by other services that have a, posit a positive impact on the environment. Maybe this way we could be able to give the country an easier path to reach a high grade of decarbonization without negatively impacting the economy. Also, this was an incentive that private sector 
to pave its own way into better and sustainable ways. This type of innovation and leadership will increase the economic stability and also save our planet. There are plenty of governmental education and social barriers, but we think that it's not that difficult. It's just to, to want to do it. We think that it's now or never. We must be unified, embrace, re embrace really hard truths, and I think that is the, the, the fact that it's more complicated for everybody, and then fight back against the biggest challenge that our generation has. Thank you very much.